but the but the, the tactics are very very different. You see what I'm saying? No. Well, go ahead. Just tell me, JP, you're absolutely drunk and you're unbearable. I don't understand. <laughs> Yes. No, not necessarily. It might, it might, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to look like it. It has to function like that. I mean, you look, you look at certain paintings and certain paintings. You know, when you look at, say, you look at the. I don't know if I told you that in section, but uh, when I was a kid in my. I must have been you know, six or seven. We have this book, and in this book there was this picture of the Mona Lisa. And then the Mona Lisa this injunction, look at this spot, and discover Julia now. For five minutes. I looked at the spot for five minutes, and I never discovered Julia now. What I'm trying to say is, it's something different to get the, the energy of something and to put something. What I'm trying to say is, is you know, you can you can put Magritte, or you can put Maxerns, meaning by that you can make a shot which looks like a Magritte or Maxerns painting. But a shot which looks like a Magritte or, or, or Maxerns painting not doesn't necessarily function like a Magritte or Maxerns painting is function. It doesn't do the same thing to your brain. So if you establish that what a painting does, does to your brain, for instance, is, is a mad circulation between the, the cardinal points of the painting. Let's say, let's take a, let's take a painting of someone you guys might know, which is a painting of Ben Farber. Well, Farber does all sorts of trajectories in his paintings, and you follow those trajectories, and those trajectories never go anywhere but to send you Again, to another trajectory. So what you what you have in terms of functioning is a painting which is so completely centered, so completely going all over the place that you never can quite leave it. I mean, it's, it's a it's an intellectual machine that sends you spinning constantly and making and making connections constantly. Well, you can conceive of making a film which is going to spin constantly and force you to make constant constant connections. It's not by necessity going to look like a modern painting. But what you're doing by doing so is you're deriving from the way something is done, a way to structure it, do your own thing. Nothing, 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 nothing else. I make films which are completely and totally grounded of jazz. You know, that, that has to do with the fact that I'm not a rock and roll boy. I'm born, I'm born at a time where the place to make out was to go to Olympia, which was a, uh, a nightclub, nightclub on the, in the, on the outskirts of Paris, where you listen to guys like uh, John Coltrane. That's the place where you went out to make out. It's not because you really love John Coltrane, it's because you hope to get lucky. <laughs> but ultimately, the hope to get lucky, you, you got lucky enough to hear John Coltrane. That's what I'm talking about. I make films which are jazzy in terms of in terms of variations, cuts, moves. That's what I make. They don't look like a Coltrane piece. They feel like one. It's a big difference. You understand? Those who don't understand will be severely shocked. Yes. Well, no, I mean, you could, you could go from the degree zero of it, which is imitation, to the most perverse form of it, which is parody. That's, that's, the, that's the gamut that you can, that you can run. Uh, okay. Only 5.15, we've got two more hours to go. I'm going to stay till the end of the night. <laughs> and you're not? <laughs> okay, 
Are we finished with that? You guys got it or not? What did you do? We said we asked that. Three zero. Okay. There's a book. There's a book by someone, another prop. It's called Word of Mouth. D A R T H E S. And it's called the Three Zero of Writing. And what is it? It's interesting to have is the fact that. It's a, it's a wonderful book. I mean, you should, you should read it if you, if you want to. What I didn't think of is the fact that uh, when you think about literature, you know, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a movement which absolutely characterized, let's say, the 20, the, the 20 years that we've lived. You guys are a little younger than that, but which has to do with the fact that uh, People, I think, are very, very suspicious of high culture. You know, we, we, don't, we don't see high to eye with high culture. We don't. What was the shit out of this? The very disreputable people, not very interesting in high culture, who think about lowercase form of culture as being the place where something is happening. And in some way, what Bart is talking about, the degree zero, is talking about a form of literature which is so, you know, you can only, you know, it's a problem of relation. You know, everything I'm saying, everything I'm saying about film is simply to try to focus on the fact that in a film, what films are relation. In a film, if you want to make believe, if you want people to express, to feel that something is going fast, you're going to have to establish something going slow. Because the idea of slow and the idea of pace are interrelated. In some ways, we only talk because there's a possibility of silence. That's the foundation of talk. The fact that we could shut up. And because we could shut up, we talk like crazy. So, Degree zero, effectively, it's because it exists those lower form of culture, that higher form can exist. And they exist as higher only because there is that zero that enables you to establish the spread. In short, if you want to think about madness, think about sanity. If you want to think about sanity, think about madness. It's called dialectics. <laughs> And, and a filmmaker is always doing that, always. Not something to feel slower, faster, something to feel like, you know, your articles, you know. It's always about it. It's always about it. All the decisions about that. Okay, so. Another concept we dealt with is the concept of ter territorialization. I love to hear the, the rustle of pages turning into an egg. <laughs> Territorialization, what did I mean by that? So, we're, we're, uh, we're fairly okay about this idea of the shit. I didn't go. I mean, maybe I should stop. No, let's not go to theory presentation right away. Uh, <laughs> you want to go to territorialization? Let's go to territorialization. I mean, shit. I was going to give you some more hints about the fact that uh, it wasn't that simple thinking about Dalian's model, but. Let's go to characterization. Okay, characterization has to do with what? It has to do with space. Why do we use the word territory? Because we define something that's happening in film as an aggressive possession of space. Because we say, ultimately, no character becomes, 
coming with all this space, we've got to establish a difference of space between the two characters who may be the same space. What is he saying? Well, we already know that we wanted to do to have this guy as the hero of our film. And we all want to have this woman here as a betrayed person in the film. And in some ways, you want to do it the other way, he is the betrayed guy, and you're the winner. Uh, in some ways, they got to inhabit in that same space, two spaces which are completely interdependent. It, it's horrible. It starts with an H. H E T T E. Thank you. I love when people help you. I mean by that, some, some, somewhere along the line, what I'm trying to establish is in the field, the space, space is significant. Space is significant. Thus, the space that, you know, and what defines the character is its position in space. Okay, that position in space, once again, the battlefield, once again, the character imposes his own space over other people. It's a battle. Can go, can see so, can go back and forth. I define my territory. Look at this class. Somewhere along the line, there's two territories defined. Here is the sphere, the sphere of knowledge. <laughs> I know you guys were gonna laugh, but uh, here's the sphere of knowledge, and is it, here is the sphere of aspiration to knowledge. Your students have a teacher. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very, it's a very great reality. Sometimes we get trying to desacralize that space. You mean by that you guys all come down in mass and beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> or for some insane reason, you know, I don't know, I dropped my pants and I showed you I've got a wig. <laughs> should, be, should be decentralizing it up. And he ain't so big. <laughs> I see like you guys like that. I'm quite sure I do like it. Now what I'm trying to say is that somewhere, somewhere along the line, in the way, uh, uh, in the way the plot is carried in film, what's at stake is the type of territories that the characters occupy and how they define it. Once again, I would really think that in a film, somebody is never defined from the inside out, but always from the outside in. I love it. When I come up with a formula, everybody starts writing. Jeff, you should be aware when I come up with a formula, I said I'm completely young. The light is serious. There is some. So those territorialities can be can be of different type. I mean they can be psychological. About territoriality. I mean, there's a, and, and the way they intersect is very, very different. Look at, think about the, think about the golden age. The salon. Everyone dressed. Sipping tea, sipping coffee. The bourgeoisie is ritual. Suddenly, across that space, a cart with two peasants going through. What is that? It's, it's about, literally, it's the big proof of what I'm saying as it any kind of meaning. It's about a space being counteracted by another space. Then we have a problem. Because we have to realize that something is happening in here that is rather strange, which is that what is, in terms of space, always happening in here is that in some way, Something is pointed at, but something is always an unsaid that is alluded to. 
and which is something that you don't see in the frame. Meaning by that, that three quarters of the time, the shots in the film are alluding to that thing that is off screen. What is he talking about? When someone in a film dialogue with someone else who is not in the shop at the same time, you're talking about this kind of off-frame effect. Three quarters of the times films are predated upon the idea that there is something that you don't see that is present. No? Yes?
territoriality. Okay, this idea that the space is something to be covered, this idea that there is something at stake in a movie, this idea that ultimately the character is always linked to his space, or his space, the idea that ultimately the difference between the position of two characters is a difference in, in location in space. So that what a movie is trying to do is to establish a certain type of heterogeneity of space to space. Yes. I've been space. waiting for this question for a year. Okay, tell me. By space, do you mean like space in the frame? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the place for the second. I know, it's, uh, it's, it's so simple. The damn it, I mean, think about it. You know, to, to film, if I want to film this guy, if I put the camera down here and film him up, he's going to look like a flat down giant. If I film the same guy from high up, he's going to look like a midget. Or a beetle squashed on the floor. <laughs> you know, that says something. You don't think there's these questions like that. You don't get, if you want to get the fact the feeling that the guy's a giant, you film it from downstairs. If you want to feel me, if you want to give the feeling that he's, he's like a beetle squash on the floor, you feel him from upstairs. Who be curious? <coughs> But you know, those are things that we effectively do it in every, uh, every moment of our lives. We invade space, we move around space, we, we establish boundaries. Cinema just takes a, a hard look at that and makes it its practice. Look, at this moment, at this game moment, I am in your mind, believe it or not, linked to that blackboard. And all my gesticulation in front of the blackboard, even the way I look not exactly like a professor, which is a way to look more like a professor than any professor that you've seen, is relevant. This is the end. Do you understand that? And films are doing exactly the same goddamn fucking thing. filmmakers and, or think about actors as defined by filmmakers as baby stuff frames. If you look at Bobby De Niro, look at Bobby De Niro, this decidedly destabilizing the space in Main Street. I mean, the Nero doesn't come alone. The Nero comes in with him dancing like fucking a, a mad Fred Astor, Fred Astor. <laughs> <laughs> on a pool table. Yeah, you don't want to tangle with the fucker. He's nuts. Johnny Boy is nuts. Johnny Boy is a loose. He comes in, he comes in with a bomb, the bomb, the a bomb, the Air, uh, whatever you call it, I mean, it's, it's, uh, what's the thing that you call it? Mailbox, psychic. Like he comes, he comes in with this Pompeii act. You know, it's something, somebody, or something, calling him a mook. All hell break loose. That's good acting. That's good acting. He was, he was, or here, I probably was a fucking good actor. Eno, Nacho, mean as hell, seductive. And now he's in the shell of himself. That's love. I'm trying to make it a big fucking actor. You know that thing, uh, what, what is it called? It's always broken. What? Midnight Run. Ooh. How can you be in Midnight Run after you've been in Mean Street? Bad part. 
So you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, now let's go to theory characterization, which are not simply about, those theory characterization can be mythical. They can have no reality whatsoever. But the waste of John Way. A man who looks like he's got a broomstick up his ass. Hey, that's the only way you can explain the way John Way walks. <laughs> and in reality, when you you hear, when when you read the you, you read the diaries of Ford of Hawks, they were absolutely they were so unique to the poor guy. And they say, but a physical territoriality, and that's what makes the star. The star is that thing, that being that is enabled to that that is enabled or that is able to embody a mythical space. It's true that it's true that the, the West the West would never be in the, you know, I mean you get you get at the end of the history of filmmaking, you you know, you have to couple something like the searchers, John Ford, to Matt Cave and Mrs. Miller. That's strangely enough. In Matt Cave and Mrs. Miller, what happens to be the strength? What happens to be the thing that uh, changed everything around? Mrs. Miller and stuff like that. Don't forget the fact that women and children are absolutely the, the they got a bad in it. They got a fucking bad. I mean, if there is something which is absolutely constantly irredeemably macho in cinema. It's this. It stinks. It stinks in it. It's, it's, it's relentless, relentless male aspiration. I mean, you know, where are these women with a little fat, drooping tits that we all know and love? They're not in cinema. Cinema, they're all young and charming and this and that. They look like a charm, you know, they look like the one that uh, got that fucking face. So do children. Okay, so, <coughs> characterization, when characterizations are physical, it's the intimation of a, of a musical thing. The West, the city, those are really physical space. Look, what characterizes, you know, there's absolutely no, no point in, in denying the fact that American culture is absolutely and totally dominating every indigenous culture of the world. There's no fact denying that what has been the, the, the you know, the, the icebreaker of American culture is, is sin. There's no denial possible that the type of editing, the type of rhythm that exists in American film is a complete betrayal of the American face. In some way, the life we live in Southern California looks more like a French film than any French film I've seen. It's slow. We're in the South. In the South, we don't do too much. We see library at the La Valencia. American cinema is very, very fast, fast. It's a dream. It's a mythical territoriality. It's a mythical vision of, of the speed of this culture. It predates itself, or it's you know, very good on the idea of speed, or use. Whatever. So, mythical territorialities. In mythical territorialities, you get you get this idea of the genre. You know, the film became, became success. I mean, if you look, think about, think about your own, I mean, go back to the fact that, you know, when you decide to go to see a movie, I have two situations. 
One, you decide to go to see a movie because hopefully you're not going to be able to talk to your lover for two hours. I do that a lot. Let's go to a movie, darling. <laughs> At least we won't talk to each other. <laughs> then you also go to a movie because you want to get in someone else's hands. Of course, when you get to someone else's hands, it's sometimes the popcorn. <laughs> Go and see the, see the goddamn movie and then talk about it. I think gorillas in the list was a very uplifting film. <laughs> <laughs> I think the guy who was playing the gorilla was fantastic. <laughs> it's true. It was great. But like the goddamn me. <laughs>
So anyway, the space, the space is basically what surrounds the character. Where is the guy what's going to be? It's, you know, effectively, the, the space, I mean, if, if I want to make you, as the actor, of whatever script we can dream about, having a certain number of powers, I'm going to have to set you in the space. You're not going to come along. I'm going to have to set you in the space in such fashion that your, your function in the film is going to be very clear. And in the space, the space is what surrounds the character. The space when you don't use that, you don't use that central thing, which is which is where we meet, uh, where you know the toupee of uh, the toupee of uh, Ted Koppel meets the the, the beaver shots of um, rampaging nurses. The space is a, is a is a volatile volatile situation in which certain relationships to space are are portrayed that have psychological implication as to the situation of the character. Does that make any sense? And do not ever believe that the film thinks it's just like the film. Yes, in some ways, no. Some way, in some fashion, I've got to make it in such a way that this guy who is the hero of our film is linked to the way this woman crosses her leg and has to look. And that's the thing that gets him in. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, no? I love that little timid yes. I would like something like the Nuremberg Rally. Hi, I'm JP. <laughs> yes. Did you ever work with a film where the environment surrounding the actors was created um, in the set where not only the direction of the actors was important, there wasn't a set, you know, like there wasn't a building behind him where could say, oh yes, yeah, so what you should do here or there, but there was actually a set direction too, yeah, which sure. you had to, that always becomes so much more complex. It's always it's always the it's always the case. I mean, you know, uh, strip one of the fun, you can kill it, you know, set designer, you can just, the words just say what it's about. It's, a, it's about designing the set. It's about making the space psychologically relevant to the character that's supposed to function. I know, if the, if, the, if the space is not relevant, the character doesn't exist. And you know, in some ways, it's an attraction of, of, of situations, real situations in life. Now, if I don't come up behind this background, you get that absolutely no sense that I'm a teacher. I mean, I deeply, deeply rely on this thing. <laughs> it's not, it's not in a relationship of power, completely fucked up, and you've got trip on me. And it's, it's, it's just that, it's just that. Yes, go and see. Go. How come? <coughs> what? I know you. <laughs> you only said but the, the keys weren't there. Didn't you break? I know. I don't know. You want to go? You guys want to break? Psychological characterization? Yeah. Okay, that's that's the class next to the to the next, next model, which is tomorrow. We're gonna do films about childhood. And I always told the children, children get it bad in films. I'm gonna show you one French film. Uh, one French film was not yet in I was born God plus zero for God. And it's all about the way children see, in a, in, a, in a contentious, revolutionary way, the space in which their parents are included. It's all about, it's all about the fucking up of authority. That's the stuff. I think there's two 
spaces. There are two spaces which are completely essential. You know, when, I, when I'm talking, when I'm talking about, when I'm talking about women in freedom, and a lot of the times I'm talking like the sexist pig that I am. It's, it's, it's very true. It's very true that I talk about women. Kids and asses and what, whatever you want to. There is something very profoundly, profoundly true in the fact that uh, there's some sort of male, there's some sort of male dictat on on how things function. What do I, what am I saying there? Uh, you know, look, the fact is that when someone wants to tell you that. And I don't think it's, it's only about, you know, the liberal position is, well, women are mistreated. You know, that's, that's nothing. That's, that, that, doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't attack the core of the problem. The core of the problem is, is a certain type of domination of the subject that the filmmaker assumes. Three quarters of the time, the films you're looking at, be very aware of the fact that they have a missionary position on their subject <laughs> as the only position possible. And I'm not saying that that can be changed overnight. <coughs> My film, for instance, uh, the subject is open on top. The liberal position. What I'm trying to say is uh,